Hi everyone, in this video we'll be diving into one of the most crucial attributes, price. It is a lifeline of any stock tracking or analysis and whether you are building a portfolio tracker or conducting research or screening stocks based on specific metrics, price will always play a starring role in your journey while you explore this Google Finance function. It's tough to imagine a tracker without price information and when it's come to screening stocks based on any criteria that you have, price will play a very central role or even a key role in your uh, use of this Google Finance function. And I hope the, the way I'm capturing uh, the question and answer format for learning this function will help you gain a lot of understanding as to how Google Finance needs to be worked on and how you can use it for your own benefit in this particular video. And with that, let's get to it. And I'll start with question one. Question one is how to get the latest price for a security. This one is very easy. I have covered it in uh, a couple of previous videos as well. So I'll be uh, taking NSE index because I live in India and NSE is the major index. And I'll be picking the stocks of ITC and SPIN. For the ticker, we just combine the index, the stock symbol, and, the, and for price, we just need to add Google Finance. Ticker is D10 and attribute is price. When you just add these metrics, you will get the latest price for NSE stock ticker ITC. You copy it below, you will get the latest price for SPI, State Bank of India, as per the latest information that I have. But this is just for the latest price. What if you want to get data for a particular stock in a particular date range? This is where this function comes in really handy. You can actually get historical price information as well. If I'm sitting at a particular day and I want 10 days before price, or you know, I want price of all the 10 days prior to this date, I can certainly guess that. I just have to use a Google Finance function here, add the you know the, the ticker, D17 is the ticker, price today minus 30. So the today function will take the date of today that is in uh, the browser itself, and today minus 30 will be 30 days prior. And I want it on a daily interval. So when I put is equal to, and you can see now this function is active. So the range is starting date today minus 30, end date is today, and I would I want it on a daily time frame. I press enter, and you can see I get the closing price information for my time period. Now, of course, it won't be exactly 30 days because there will be uh, holidays as well. So these are all trading days. So you can see there are gaps between 1st and 2nd of July. So right now we have 26, 27, then 28, 29 is missing. So you won't, it, it won't be perfect information, but you will get the closing details for whatever is available in the system for this particular ticker. Now, this was for inner daily frequency. I use the today function to give you whatever is 30 days back from today. So it's dynamic. If you will do it after five days of you know me showing you this, you will get some different results. What if you want to hard code dates? You can do it. You just have to make sure that you don't put the today function and you put the dates in a format that the function understands. So it's very easy to do that. You just have to do Google Finance, ticker symbol, price, starting date is 1st June 2023, ending date is 30th June 2023, and you want the price on a daily time frame. So I'll come here, I'll put is equal to, and you can see the results yourself. And you'll see this is all the data in June 2023 from 2nd of June to 30th of June. This is all the prices that are available from the closing, right? So this is how you can hard code dates or you can use a dynamic form of dates as well by using the today function inside the Google Finance function. Okay, moving on to the next question. Are we restricted to a daily frequency? So if you notice in question number two, I use the daily frequency at the end of it. Does the Google Finance function give me any other metric that I can probably use it in my time frame? Yes, you can export the weekly frequency as well, but that is where this function has a limitation. After weekly, you cannot go monthly or yearly. So if I hard code the dates again from 1st June to 30th June, and I want the price on a weekly time frame, so it will give me the first price after every seven days. So example, if I show you the results of this uh, formula, you see, I get it after every seven days, 2nd June, 9th June, 16th June, 23rd June, and 30th June, right? So you can use the weekly function if you don't want any overcrowding of uh, data 
when you analyze the price and if you want to just see weekly returns or monthly returns you can probably you know just get the data in a weekly format and then look into the dates to you know uh, get the monthly returns so you can just subtract 451 by 443 and this will be kind of your monthly return in this particular script right so now we move to question four what if you don't want only the close price data but you want all the price level data that is open close low and high that's easy you just need to specify all in the function where you specify price and you'll get all the price details for that particular security along with a volume column as well just make sure that you only replace the price input with all and you will still get all the price level informations so i'll just go here and this is equal to and here the same script open price on that particular day what was the high on that day what was the low on that day what did the price close at and what was the volume on that particular day right so just use all and you'll get all the price level data along with volume as well right okay now the last question will cover 52 week high price and the 52 week low price to understand the range of stock in one year of its trading so let's say you are interested in these two stocks we already saw in question one how to get the current price it's very easy to get the current price let's run it again the ticker would be d82 and i just want price oops i just want price right copy and these are the current prices but if i want to see 52 week and 52 week low that will give me the range of a stock in the past one year of its trading how to get that google finance has a high 52 and a low 52 i attribute that you can call in the function and they'll be able to help you out in this particular case so if i type the google finance function again it's google finance pick up d82 attribute is high 52 and that's it i'll get this from the latest current price if i go for 52 weeks back in that time frame 497.7 was the highest uh, price at which itc traded on nse index similarly if i want to go for low i'll do google finance ticker and the attribute would be low 52 And similarly for SPI, we have 499. So you can see that ITC has been in a 10% range in the past one year of trading, whereas SBI has been a bit more volatile and it's more than 20% range in the last one year of trading. So you can define your risk based on that if you're a long-term investor or not. But again, that's that I leave to your judgment. Right now, you can use the price attribute and different inputs in Google Finance function to understand how price is behaving which stocks you really want to look into and i think these five questions are a really good start for exploring the price functionality in this particular function i will cover more questions in the upcoming videos thanks for watching this one and i'll see you again cheers